Young and the Restless Latest Update, Audra makes Kyle an intriguing offer and Jack is outraged over Ashley's announcement. Hey there, I'm Sophia. Welcome to my channel. Please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. The young and the restless Nick upsets Sally. Jack confronts Ashley and Tucker and Audra pitches Kyle. In Sally's suite, Nick surprises her with hot sauce. He asks how her meeting with Chloe went. Sally reports she totally got out of her head for a bit. Nick is pleased to hear it. She asks about his meeting with Victor. Nick says his dad offered him a job, working with Adam. Sally rants that his father is unbelievable. Is he trying to pick a fight? She finds him infuriating. Nick says she's not the only one who feels like that. Sally complains about Victor trying to bring Nick into his drama with Adam and stir the pot. Adam won't want him to work with him as he'll want all the glory. For some reason, people want to try and fix him, but it can't be done. Nick's surprised that she feels this strongly. Sally says Adam's not in her life anymore and she'd prefer that he not deal with him either. Nick doesn't like his dad's suggestion either, but his father fears Adam will start spiraling again. Sally declares that Adam is trouble and it will only get worse. She meant it when she said she doesn't want him to be a part of her life anymore. Adam walks into the coffee house and he and Sharon exchange a look. He orders and she asks if he wants whipped cream. They chat about weekend plans. Adam will be working and Sharon has plans with Mariah, Tessa, and Aria. She suggests Adam take Connor camping, but he says the kid is away. He's throwing himself into things. Sharon asks, what things? Adam takes his drink and walks out even as she calls his name. Kyle walks into the GCAC and spots Audra working at a table. He flashes to having ordered her some flowers and diamond earrings. She notices him standing there and smiles. Kyle walks over and she says, you seem very pleased about something. Kyle grins, I am if you are. Audra loves her extravagant earrings and flowers but warns she received them in front of his wife. Kyle's unbothered. Audra wonders if that was the plan to make her jealous. Kyle assures her that Summer didn't factor into this at all. He figured if Audra didn't call, the flowers would be a fond farewell. If she did call, the earrings would be a sparkly hello again. Audra compliments the gifts and invites him up to see how the flowers look in her suite. He liked that. They stand up. Audra admires his attitude, not giving a damn who sees them together. Kyle has nothing to hide. Audra prefers to keep her personal life private. She sashays away and up the stairs, pausing to look back at him. At society, Ashley and Tucker toast to the provocative bit of PR they just sent out and to a successful venture. Ashley titters that Jack's phone should be painting every minute. His head's going to explode. She hopes it's as traumatic for him as having Diane shoved down her throat has been for her. Tucker thinks it will take her brother will be traumatized. I can already hear it. He chortles doing an impression of Jack. Ashley, that you would betray our family for this flimflam man, for this charlatan. It's an outrage. You've gone too far. At the Abbott house, Diane tells Jack she feels so badly for Kyle. He and Summer are having tough times. Jack reads his foam and goffs, are you kidding me? I don't believe this. He tells Diane that Ashley and Tucker have gone into business together. It's an outrage. Diane takes the phone and reads that they're helming a new health and beauty startup. She feels it can't be real. Jack has to make a call. He finds out the new company is legit in fumes. How did it even get this far? Diane feels responsible. Jack tells her she's not to blame. There have been times in Ashley's life when she's done things that are mystifying to him. This is one of them. This is not your doing. This is Tucker McCall's doing and I am through with putting up with it. And with him, at society, Tucker continues his impression of a disapproving Jack. Ashley tells him he's disturbingly good at it. Tucker predicts that Jack will make Ashley some lucrative offers to stay at Jabot. Just then, Jack and Diane walk in. Tucker raises his glass and shoots them an enthusiastic grin. Ashley asks if Jack and Diane have come to congratulate them. Jack says he wants to speak to Tucker. Ashley makes decisions for herself and informs her brother that he can speak to her and not her business partner. Tucker pipes up, don't forget fiancé. They can noodle as Jack sneers that Ashley is so predictable. As soon as she couldn't get her own way, she picks up her toys and leaves them all hanging. Tucker wants to have a conversation with Jack and find out what his future brother-in-law has to say so they head outside. 
Diane asks Ashley if she's sure she wants to go to war just because she doesn't like her. What will it take to end this? Ashley snarks. It sure didn't take long to get to the bargaining stage. Kyle knocks on the door of Audra's suite, and she answers in a pink silk robe. Kyle says this gives business casual a whole new meaning. She drops the robe, and he starts unbuttoning his shirt. While working in the jazz lounge, Adam flashes to his last conversation with Nick, in which he complained about his brother always being the hero. In Sally's suite, Nick tries to change the subject from Adam to Chloe and work, but Sally needs to rest. Nick asks if she wants to watch a movie, but she needs space. She has a hair trigger temper right now and doesn't want to say anything to hurt him. She can tell he's trying. Nick kisses her and goes. In Audra's suite, she and Kyle kiss after sex. He feels like he's 20 again back in New York. Audra says it feels like she had to give up a big part of herself to be successful. No time to be playful or spontaneous. They can be carefree there. Kyle muses. Until the next meeting or spreadsheet, Audra confesses she really likes it at Newman. Kyle warns her it's hard to trust the Newmans. Audra is running Newman Media with autonomy and needs a right-hand man. Interested? She asks. Nick joins Sharon at Crimson Lights where she talks about using Cameron's company for good. She asks about Sally. He admits he managed to upset her. He explains that Victor wants him to go and help Adam at McCall. In other words, insert himself where he knows he's not wanted. Victor is worried that Adam will channel his pain into going after Victoria and Newman Media. Dad thinks there needs to be some buffer. Sharon asks what he told Victor. Nick says he told him he'd think about it. He made the mistake of telling Sally, who is blown away that he's even considering it. Sharon guesses she's trying to find her equilibrium after a trauma, which is hard. Nick asks for Sharon's opinion on him working with Adam. Outside of society, Jack tells Tucker if he actually has any real affection for Ashley. He'll call off this foolishness, the wedding, the new company. He accuses him of dragging her away from the company she loves. Tucker tells Jack he's lost perspective. Jabba is a company, nothing more. If he wants to honor his father, he should wish his sister well, toast her new beginning, and embrace her impending marriage. Jack calls him a selfish son of Fabich who wants everyone else's life to be as empty and meaningless as his. Inside, Diane tells Ashley she will do whatever it takes to make Jack's life easier and asks Ashley, what will it take? Ashley muses that a week ago she would have told her to leave, but now she actually wants to pursue this. It's only a matter of time before Diane does something stupid to harm Jabot, and in the meantime, she and Tuck will be nurturing their company. When Jabot flounders, thanks to Diane, they'll be there to help and Jack will cut her loose. You're never going to be a true member of our family. You will never be an abbot. Not ever as long as you live. At Crimson Lights, Sharon tells Nick that only he and Adam can decide if it's right to work together. Nick knows Adam has been emphatic about turning McCall around on his own, but he can help prevent him from making bad decisions. Sharon wonders if Adam will take this as a sign of a lack of faith on Victor's behalf. Nick concedes there are a lot of red flags. Sharon muses, but you want to do it. In Andra's suite, she makes her pitch to Kyle on why he should join her at Newman Media. The kicker is that Adam is using McCall as a weapon to come after them. If he can make a go of it, Newman Media might be imperiled. We need to swing first and swing fast, and I think you're the perfect man for the job. Kyle hesitates and she asks why. He says, one my family. Outside society, Tucker thinks Jack is afraid to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Ashley, and that's why he's out there bickering with him. Tucker says they both know she does what she wants. He suggests Jack just admit it. The sooner he does, the sooner he'll be on his journey to acceptance. At Crimson Lights, Sharon tells Nick she suspects he already knows what her advice will be. Nick guesses she thinks he should do it because Adam is grieving and is a powder keg. He can help prevent anyone else from getting hurt if he explodes. Sharon asks, so what will you do? In the jazz lounge, Adam thinks back to slipping the note under Sally's door. In her suite, Sally thinks about Adam's note and sighs. In the lounge, Adam flashes to Audra taunting him about being stood up and warning her to prepare for the biggest battle of her life. At society, Jack and Diane leave. Ashley tells Tucker that Diane tried bargaining with her. She's terrible at it. Tucker relays that the news of their new venture has hit Jack hard. 
Ashley says the celebration has gone even better than she was hoping for. They down champagne and grin. In Audra's suite, she continues to make her pitch for Kyle to join her at Newman Media. He muses that the company is going places, that's for sure. Still, it's not a decision he can make on the spur of the moment. Audra thinks it would be a lot more palatable than working with his estranged wife. Kyle starts kissing her and they begin having sex again. Next on The Young and the Restless, Michael has a secret rendezvous and Daniel opens up to Lily.